In this video, I want to talk with you about remaining in Christ, remaining in his Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit, you know, we've talked about this in the book of John, we're told that the Holy Spirit is not going to speak on his own authority. He's actually receiving from Christ. And we know that we are a vessel. We're supposed to be occupied. We're, we're designed to be occupied and you can't occupy yourself. And so if we're not fanning into flame God's Holy Spirit, we're going to be occupied by a different spirit. That's why it's so important for us to understand that what has been taught in counterfeit Christianity with regard to, um, you know, some of the things that I've heard people say are you can't live in the spirit all the time. What do you mean you can't live in the spirit all the time? You're designed to live in the spirit all the time. If you're not living in the spirit all the time, you're going to be occupied by a different spirit. And I think the reason why people believe these crazy things like you can't live in the spirit all the time is because they're being friends with the world and uh, trying to be friends with the world and friends with Christ. And you just can't do that. And so they think things like, well, I can't be in the spirit when I'm at work because I have to jump into the flesh. God would never require you to do that. That's what the world requires you to do. And so we start thinking things, you know, when we're denying his power and we're denying his ability to move in our lives, we start thinking things like, well, I have no other choice. I have to, I have to work. I have to survive. I can't, uh, I can't observe his Sabbath because I have to go to work. Says who? God will make a way for you to obey everything that he has told you to obey. He has not established a covenant with you that you are incapable of fulfilling. That would be ridiculous. I mean, that's like setting up your child for failure. So when I say that you are capable of fulfilling that covenant only by his spirit, only by faith in him, only by trusting him and knowing that he is capable of giving you a job or turning the heart of your boss so that you can have Sabbath off or, you know, making sure that you are able to go through this life living in the heart and spirit by his spirit. There's never a point at which you need to go then jump into the flesh, which by the way, he has already told you that you have to be circumcised from the sinful flesh and disciplined in the physical flesh. We can't live in a place that's undisciplined. Your flesh is inherently undisciplined. If you're living in your flesh, you will inevitably reconnect with the sinful flesh. You will inevitably become uncircumcised because this, the physical flesh desires the things of the sinful flesh. Okay, glory, status, instant gratification, indulgence. And so you'll start doing things like just eating whatever you want, be, you know, and uh, doing whatever you want and pursuing the things of the world. Because I'll tell you right now, when God has you living in him, it, these are not the things of the world. You're actually broken. So you will not be capable of picking up his covenant, of fulfilling his covenant if you're living in the flesh. You got to live in the spirit that is willing. Remember, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. There was something that God said to me early on, uh, it, it not just said to me, but he covenanted with me and required me to say to him, that I would never, that I, to make this promise that I would never turn my face from him again. And he's reminding me of it more lately and telling me that if I'm engaging in something, if I'm eating something, if I'm watching something, if I'm saying something, if I'm in a conversation with someone that I am not comfortable bringing him into, I need not go there. Okay, so early on he said, that I needed to promise that I would never turn my face from him again. And I held to that promise so that any time that I felt like I wanted to hide, that I would immediately go back into repentance and talk with him about what I was feeling and do the inner child work so that I would be willing to change and turn. More recently, he's talking with me about certain things that I'm engaging in. And it's not like, listen, the things that I talk to you about are not these sins that we would say, oh my gosh, that's really bad. It's things like I commit to doing something with him and then I'm like, uh, you know, I could just have like a little bit of this 
or something like that, right? But I've already made a commitment to him. I actually did that last night, but I did pray and talk with him about it. So last yesterday, I um, had made a commitment to drink um, to drink broth all day, and because I feel him calling me into disciplining my flesh and wanting to speak to me. And as it is, he was speaking to me last night a lot. And I posted a few videos on that. He was calling me into this, but I was like so hungry. I was so hungry. And I really just, I needed something. And so I sorted it through with him and ended up having a bowl of oatmeal. And listen, not giving up on it, I'm drinking broth again today. But here's the difference. The difference is that I was starting to get into this habit of like making a commitment and then saying, ah, uh, I could just have a little bit of this or a little bit of that. The difference is that I sat and prayed and sorted it through with him and then made a decision with him that I was going to have this bowl of oatmeal. Now, let me tell you why this is important. Because what happens when we start making excuses is that we start separating from him. In order for me to excuse myself, I have to separate from him. I got to jump back up into my flesh and make some rationalizations and justifications. In order for me to sort it through with him, if I'm taking him in it with me, then I'm praying and I'm asking him, Lord, I'm really struggling right now with this. Is it okay if I have this? I'm committed to doing this thing, but this is the first day and I'm really struggling. Is it okay? I've drank broth all day. Is it okay if I have this? Okay, so now he's bringing me into a deeper place of understanding how I will start to separate from him. So previously, I was turning my face from him. It was like, you know, I would hide my face from him like he didn't see what I was doing. That's what led me into being in that condition that I was in of being on the brink of death. It was like I had my spiritual life with him in the morning and then I would go off and do other things during the day. You just can't live like that, right? So I was thinking that I was somehow hiding hiding from him. So he had me make that covenant with him and it was important and it taught me how to return to him and any time that I was feeling shame, any time that I was feeling like I wanted to hide from him, then I would return to him and I would immediately start examining myself. So that was important. Now he's taking me in deeper and he's saying, you can't justify any of these little things that you've been justifying because you see that they start to take you away from me. So you need to bring me into everything that you're doing. And if you don't feel comfortable bringing me there, you need not be there. That means anything that I'm watching, listening to, conversations I'm having, food that I'm eating, God needs to be there. And so for this reason, he's calling me into really disciplining my flesh. So he has been, he actually told me for about a week told me to, um, cause I ended up with these hives and I think honestly, I think part of it has to do with me eating chili because he told me not to eat chili and I love, love chili oil. And I really don't eat like a lot of different things. Like I make a pot of soup every few days and I eat from that pot of soup and then sometimes I'll have like a bowl of oatmeal, but I eat pretty like simple. But that one thing is chili oil and I make this chili oil and then I put it like put like a drop in my soup and I love it. And I think that I've developed an issue with it because you do anything too frequently, like too much, and you're going to develop an issue. Not because I have an allergy or a medical condition, but because I've been doing it too much. And he started to tell me to stop eating chili and I didn't stop because then I'd eat the soup and I'd be like, "Eh, it's missing something. It's like, it's good, but you know, it's a dumb thing, but he's teaching me something. That's the point. The point is not the chili oil. The point is what he's teaching me. And so I ended up that, you know, that was like one week. He gave me a chance to listen to him. I didn't listen. And I ended up with hives. (laughs) I ended up with hives. And so I continued eating the chili oil. And it, I'm telling you, it was like something that I could not 
separate from it. So his voice kept getting louder and it started out with the hives on my right hip and then it moved across my stomach and spread. And so, you know what? That's what I get. I didn't listen. I even sort of convinced myself that, nah, he didn't tell me that. I didn't hear that. Why would God tell me to stop eating chili oil? You know what I mean? So I have largely lived my life eating whatever I wanted. You know, before I got sick, I could eat whatever I wanted. And I did. And I ate as much as I wanted. And I didn't really suffer any consequences. My body was strong. I had a good metabolism. I mean, I was good to go. He let me, he gave that to me. It is not that way anymore, let me tell you. Because I have worn out my privileges of being able to eat certain foods and I and I overindulged in certain foods, you know? Like if I eat, if I'm eating flour, then I'm eating lots of flour. I'm eating it every day. Same thing with sugar, same thing with dairy, same thing with chili oil. So what he's doing with me does not have anything to do with me developing some condition. What he's doing with me is disciplining and letting me know you, that I cannot I cannot indulge like that. I can't make something an idol. And I know that sounds really weird that you could make chili oil some sort of an idol, but if you're overeating it every day, your food is fuel. It's not something to indulge in. But that's like not in my it's not in my repertoire yet. You know what I mean? So I know that God wants me to enjoy, but he doesn't want me to make that the thing that I'm like living for, you know? And we can do that with food. I know that sounds weird, but think about it. You can do that with certain foods and you can avoid feeling your feelings and avoid discipline and process and receiving other things that he's trying to do with you because you're indulging. And that's what he was dealing with me on. And I'm I'm here thinking, well, it's just soup. It's vegetables and turkey and like good nutritious broth and, you know, but I probably wouldn't have eaten as many bowls of soup if I wasn't digging on that chili oil so much. Okay. So, I mean, this is what I mean by it. it's not like I'm out there, you know, committing major sins, but this is a sin if this is how I'm setting it up in my life. And I can't, justify. And that's what he's teaching me. And he's also teaching me that this part of the reason you don't feel so good. So again, he's always working with me and I'm always receiving it. And there's always something for him to work on with me. You know, it never like, (laughs) I'm never like arriving anywhere, but I will, I will on the day of the Lord I will be covered and I will have received this covenant and and fulfilled this covenant that I have with him because I am doing this on a daily basis. I am listening to him. I am imperfect, but he is moving me to understand who I need to be. So I just wanted to share those couple tidbits of my testimony. Do not hide your face from him. Promise him that you will not hide your face from him. And then make sure that anytime that you feel like you want to, that you return to him in examination and repentance. You are indeed designed to be in the spirit all the time. You are designed to be inhabited by him all the time. I don't care what anyone tells you. That is your design. And finally, bring him everywhere with you. Every conversation every meal, every snack. And this way you have those checks and balances that you are living correctly in him. Thank you for listening. God bless you. And I'll see you in the next video.